Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm doing an extended demonstration and if you're joining me on the premiere of this video you can leave your comments and questions in the comments bar on the side here and I'm going to be responding to those and maybe giving some more information that might help you with your painting. Alright, so what's the idea behind this demonstration I'm going to do today? I'm going to try and share my thought process through painting a subject that is not particularly uh, special. Um, sometimes you can paint a subject that is uh, a magnificent scene and you really don't have to do much to it. It kind of just describes itself. But I find a lot of challenge with a fairly normal type of scene, like this one I'm doing today. It's uh, basically just a little cottage and a road. Yes, there is a little mountain backdrop there, but just a, a glimpse of that. Really, it's just a cottage and trees and a road. So it's fairly normal type of scene. Now, we're confronted with these scenes all the time um, in our hometown or down the road, whatever it may be. But sometimes, depending on the lighting or something like that, it might actually make a good subject. So I'm going to show you what I do to try and give the painting a little bit extra and make the scene a little more special than it might seem from day to day. All right, let's get into the painting. If you have any questions, add them to the sidebar over here and I'll be responding to them as this uh, premiere runs as well. And uh, let me know what you think of the painting as well. And I'll try and describe as much of the process as I can throughout the video as well. Pretty much my standard palette of colors, orange perhaps being the sort of luxury convenience color here. And with a little bit of ultramarine blue, I start off roughly looking for the horizon line and where I'm going to place the focal area. I'm using a Georgia number no. four round brush to do this rough drawing in. Get the perspective line of the roof correct, so receding away towards the vanishing point. That's more or less the most important thing to get right with your building. I've used a little bit of white spirits to soften up the ultramarine blue. Apart from that, I don't use any other mediums. I'm using a Classico by My Mary for the oil paints here. But this exercise works perfectly for any opaque medium like acrylics or gouache as well. Loosely drawing in the main shapes before I start blocking in. And I'm looking for the darks. That is the first thing as far as values are concerned that really help to give a scene a bit more impact. So if you see some dark areas in a painting, that's a good uh, idea or a good thing to work on to increase the drama and uh, effectiveness of your painting. It's those dark areas against the lights that make the lights stand out. Now the addition of a bit of um, orange just to start turning the color towards a subdued green now that's fine at this stage. You can do that. You don't have to do the entire block in with ultramarine blue, of course. But you notice I'm not putting any white paint in. And I try and do the block in stage without white paint for as far as possible. Sure, a little bit of white paint will come in for the sky colors and a few of the lights on the road. But even then, I use very little white paint. Getting in a good, thick, rich color at the start is important. 
it sort of uh, creates the pattern or the foundation that you build on throughout the painting. I think if you start off with too much white paint, you're, you're always on the back foot because then you're fighting the, the white paint and your colors are being desaturated, they're losing too much vibrancy. Here's a diagonal that I'm keeping in mind. I'm just making a little bit more of it. So why worry about that? Well, the diagonal is a very strong compositional line. It has a certain dynamic to it, which creates a sense of movement and direction. So there's a diagonal in the mountain line at the top. There's a diagonal in the foreground. And then the building is going in the other direction, an opposing diagonal. So you almost have a subtle Z shape, which is a classic compositional element that leads the eye in and back and then in again and keeps the, the viewer's eye moving around and interested in the painting composition. Throwing in a bit of alizarin and cerulean blue. And now just a tiny drop of white because I'm going to plan to increase the shadow in the foreground. You see that bit of shadow showing in from the left. Well, make a bit more of it and create a foreground shadow. Now, I look for foreground shadows a lot. In fact, I'm always looking out for any shadows in my landscapes. And how can I make the most of it? It helps for the viewer to step in to the scene and, of course, another contrast with the warm light color that will be in the road. Now in the mountain I have put some white paint into the cerulean and alizarin, alizarin crimson and this creates a, a colorful violet color. Still more color than white paint. So that's more or less the mountain blocked in at the moment. We'll work on that a bit later. Now I've got that bit of sky. That's just cerulean and white with a little touch of lemon yellow to add warmth to it. So the main elements are taking shape. I'm going to define the mountain just a little bit but not with too many strong edged shapes. The, the strong edges are for the focal area of the cottage and perhaps in the foreground between the shadow and light. But uh, subtle temperature changes in the mountain. It's more or less all one value, sort of a middle value. Uh, just brocking in the roof. The roof is sort of a warmish gray. As long as the, the roof, light areas of the roof remain light and warm against the little shadows on the left hand side of the roof, then that's the main thing. So I'm using a little bit of touch of red, white and a little bit of um, that violet now to do the shadow side. I'm kind of assuming this side of the, the building because you can't really see it behind the tree. But I'm showing some of it to give some structure to the, the object for, for us as the viewer. In this uh, shadow area I'm going to work on a bit more just so that I know that the shadow is there and I'll define it a bit more later on. Strong light on the edge of the building, so you'll use titanium white. You could add a little bit of orange to it or yellow. 
but not pure white of course, that's way too cold. Remember white paint is, is a cold colour and too much of it makes your colours basically kills off the vibrancy and creates a chalky cold looking painting. Now lemon yellow is probably my most commonly used colour for foliage, grass, trees. If I want a, a warmer colour I'll probably add a little bit of that uh, cadmium orange. But for the most part lemon yellow is the most effective colour for, for grass and most trees. Now some of the road colours I'm working with burnt sienna, white and a touch of orange. So for any dirt road I'm usually using burnt sienna. If it's a very light road I may use uh, yellow ochre instead. But as you can see these roads have a, a reddish look to it so burnt sienna is perfect. So now using the long flat brush, a number six long flat, to get in bigger shapes in the foreground and just working out where I'm going to throw in spots of light. Holding the brush very lightly, just buttering on the paint. Most of my brush strokes are sort of parallel as well parallel movements like this. Either up and down or from side to side. But I'm never trying to jab the brush into the, the painting or really trying to upset layers of paint. I try to work on top of existing layers and carefully layer the paint on So looking ahead with the, the painting and as I said to try and give the scene a little more interest there's going to be a lot more thicker paint coming into the foreground. There are details that I will be adding but quite minor ones. Um, fences perhaps and poles and probably a figure as well will be a good thing. So what I'll do is I'll look at the reference and simply be guided by it. From this point on I've got to think about the painting itself. Some shapes can be left fairly similar as they appear in the reference but others I need to add in and make changes. This tree I'm putting in a few highlights which are not really there in the reference and then there are touches of light that I need to bring into the, the foreground over here and also into the trees on the left hand side cutting in there and showing some or suggesting some more details. Working in some shadow and light in that foreground creates a little more interest and now I'm changing the shadow colour into a more of a complementary colour, sort of a blue-violet, which will show off the burnt sienna in the road as well as the yellows in the grass a lot better. Plus it's a nice colour and that is important for aesthetic reasons. Now some impasto which is more or less just white and lemon yellow which I find makes a very nice highlight green colour for grass. Of course it's more yellow than green but sun shining on the grass 
it must look warm and therefore be considerably influenced by yellow paint. If I add too much blue to make a strong green, I'm actually cooling the color down too much and I end up with a more middle value color. Now that's not what I want. I want a high key or in other words a light value on the uh, sun filled areas. Now just suggesting some tree shapes in the shadows there. I may not actually see them but I want to suggest them. Now with a cool blue I'm creating some interest in the trees on the left. And the shadow side of the trees getting more indirect light so you can see something there but it's not very bright. It's more of the mystery of the shadow and that's a very important part of my paintings. I think the shadows are the single most important element to make a light filled painting. As counterintuitive as that may sound, you improve your light areas by improving your shadows. It's a very simple suggestion of information. A bit of orange in those trees there, so suggest that, but don't put uh, colors that are too vibrant close to the edge of your painting either. So that will be secondary. This bit of dark over here helps to make the roof stand out and the light of the building. The strongest focal area is the edge of the cottage facing us and uh, that I need to sort of lead the eye to that. As you can see these dark accents in the road are extremely effective. It uh, catches the eye's attention and doesn't let the viewer wander around too much. So you are painting with, with a purpose. The purpose is to grab the viewer's attention and lead them gently in the direction you want to go. Now some thicker strokes coming in. The strong light and impasto shapes and a few, few but loose details. Just dots and lines. Although I'm talk about details, I'm always trying to think of how to keep the painting as simple as possible. So if I can make one shape instead of three, I'm going to go for the one shape every time. This bit of light next to the left hand margin uh, I would like to just close that up a bit with a shadow as well. The problem is that it tends to lead the eye there and I don't want the eye to lead off on the left hand side of the painting. And this way I can also add in a few of these highlights. Time to just clean up some of this paint as well, get some solid strokes of color in. And a touch of a loose red, 
sets off some of the greenery and adds a bit of sparkle to the scene. Very, very little things, but they do have an effect. If you have too much green, put in a few reddish marks. Keep the palette clean and you keep your color notes clean. And so we're getting towards the end of the painting, but it still needs some, uh, some more interest. Therefore, I am going to be looking at adding a figure and I want a bit more of him in pasta on the roof as well. Some texture there. Increase those lights. You can see how that boost of light immediately takes place. Leaving some of the pinkish color showing through below and a few highlights showing through the trees. Now the thing with texture, it's very important that a viewer gets to see texture in your painting when they go closer up. I don't believe it's enough just to create an illusion of a subject. So when you look far away, you're seeing the illusion, but when you go up close, you're seeing the beauty of the texture in the paint as well. I've taken out the rigger brush for a few of these lines. Never forget the shadow under the roof as well. Just tidying up the shape of the, the cottage. Suggestion of some windows. Very soft. Don't, don't use a dark black shape. It, it'll just stand out like a sore thumb. Straighten this line a little. So you've got to take your time and construct your painting. I always say you can work quickly, but uh, it doesn't mean it's got to be sloppy either. I'm actually using the rigger here to drop in some small impasto notes. Just little sparks of shape and color. This dark here just accentuating some of those light greens and yellows. Right, time for some fence posts. These little man-made elements help to add harmony and balance to the natural elements. And the vertical line. The vertical lines are very important. So I'm always looking for things like a power line or a telephone pole or something like that. There's a gate there, I think would be a good little touch. Just warm that up with a bit of burnt sienna. And I've got a nice little warmish red element there. So those little touches already start to pull the scene together. Suggestion of a few tree trunks. There's also a signpost up there which I'll bring in. If you make a fence post and it's too thick, use the surrounding colors to cut in and make the fence post thinner. But a light in between tree trunks over here adds a nice little sense of depth and interest. And now the figure, start off with a dark shape, usually ultramarine. The figures like this are mostly in shadow anyway. Make the legs quite long, at least one longer than the other. And it looks like the figure is walking. 
bit of light on the correct side of course and a touch of burnt sienna for the face now I need to cut in there and just get that arm looking correct you can really get sucked into spending a lot of time with the figure but I desperately try to avoid overworking it and a shadow to attach it to the ground and that should do for that figure clean up a few messy areas like this it's also just cutting in and cleaning up the scene between the posts and that it just helps to make the scene read a bit better when you clean up some fussy details everything should try and help the scene not distract the viewer so I think we've got a nice sense of light a few accent lights and darks as well they just break up areas that may be a little too flat and I'll put in that uh, signpost just to break up the dark mass shape in the background that's a first bit too light let's put a bit of more blue into that and uh, I'll use the background color to cut in just to get that shape a little bit smaller then I've got to break up the shapes I'm putting in now because they look like a halo around the, the signpost and I don't want that so re-establish the darks there and uh, that looks a little more effective So just to recap to try and get some more interest in your scene, simplifier shapes, strong lights and darks, good impasto color and don't bring in too much white paint in the early stages, keep your, keep your dark colors rich and uh, use composition elements like diagonal lines, use shadows use vertical elements like the fence posts and etc to break up some organic shapes and uh, don't be afraid of using a lot of paint in the light areas you can really put in some good thick and juicy paint and your brush can be relatively large I'm only using the rigger for small areas but most of the painting was put together with a large round brush and an even larger long flat bristle brush and this is a very small painting this is a 6 by 8 so you can, uh, you can have fun with lots of paint and big shapes and don't be afraid of using too much paint more paintings fail because of too little paint being used I've always said using too little paint costs you a lot because you end up with a disappointing painting whereas if you use a bit more paint you end up with a painting that is really much much better and then you haven't wasted any paint I want to just break that edge up a little these little uh, shadow areas can be can be really uh, difficult to let go 
Well, I've got some overlapping foliage shapes there now. The roof looks a little um, like it's been chopped a bit too much. So I'm just going to sign off on the painting, but that doesn't mean the painting is necessarily done. I'll always find something to correct. Uh, the trick is not doing too much extra. So assess the painting. Um, I just got to fix that line up. It's a little too choppy and uh, that's a bit better. And there we go. In the end I was happy with the painting. I'll take the tape off and have another look and I think we've got a nice little peaceful landscape scene. I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. Just a, a simple scene, but we try to give it a little bit extra. And it's a good way for you to actually improve your painting by picking scenes like this and then thinking about the color and the light and dark shapes and brushwork and those little extras you can add to it as well. Now remember I've got a free course for you as well. You can find that in the description below. And don't forget to let me know how your painting goes or if you have any questions let me know as well and I'll try and respond to them whenever I can. Well thanks very much for joining me on this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And until next time, happy painting. Mm -hmm.